Six locks between Passau and Regensburg. That's what you did a couple of days ago. Last night you entered the Main Danube Canal in the town of Kelheim, and that was the first lock um, on the artificial waterway. You were climbing up to the summit level during the night, and then since the early morning, uh, something very important changed because now whenever you go into a lock you always go down and that will be the case for the entire remainder of your journey. You can also see by the height of the steps that these are really the biggest locks now. These are the 325 meter locks. The port of Nuremberg is two more locks away and then you will spend another night I think mostly on the canal going to Bamberg. Uh, that port is also still on the canal and then you will be on the Main River, M-A-I-N. And the Main River has also a very large number of locks, as you can see, 34 in total, bringing you to Würzburg, Aschaffenburg and Frankfurt. And here we have Mainz, and Mainz is the confluence with the Rhine River, so there you will head north. And the Rhine really doesn't have locks in this area, only shortly before Amsterdam, there's another short canal stretch, the Amsterdam Rhine Canal. So there you will be seeing another couple of locks, but you can see it's really mostly in this area here. And if you count that together, 56 locks between the German Danube and the confluence of the Main River with the Rhine. Now from this chart, you can already see that the summit level of the canal is a very crucial part of the entire system. It's uh, the highest point of your journey, of course, that you crossed this morning. It's the highest point of the European inland waterways. It's also the highest point in the world that I'm aware of, which you can reach with the help of a ship that starts sailing at sea level. So nowhere else you can really go from zero all the way up to 406 meters, 1,332 feet, with the help of an artificial lock system. That is quite impressive. Um, it's also the place, by the way, where the builders of the Main Danube Canal had to make sure that there's always enough water in the system. Because um, this is a still water canal. Maybe you saw that already. Uh, there is not much of a current. It's mostly the wind moving um, the waves a little bit. And sometimes the lock takes in water and pushes out water. That's the only movement that we have. So there is no stream and we don't have any natural inlets as well. And that means um, you probably saw that when you go through a lock, some water is always released to the lower end. Uh, if we didn't do anything about that, the entire canal would fall dry in the end and the summit level would be first. In order to avoid that, uh, a number of artificial uh, lakes, reservoirs, had to be built close to the summit. And the highest one is uh, next to the lock of Bachhausen, which was the lock before the upper part of the summit level and uh, the reservoir there is called the Durlo reservoir that is what it looks like so here we have the lock of Bachhausen that might have been yeah five o'clock in the morning um, approximately that we were there and here we have the water in this reservoir and it's actually Danube river water because it has to be pumped up there from the Danube with the help of five pumping stations that is mostly during the night because electricity fees are lower there. And this water can then be used to refill the summit level of the canal whenever that is necessary. Yeah, and the third reason why the summit level is so special is the fact that there you have crossed the European watershed, the continental divide. And that was also quite early this morning, shortly before you arrived at the lock of Hilpolstein, that is two locks further uh, behind, there was even a monument on the left bank of the canal that the canal authority